Now, there's a new study out uh, that shows that going to a $15 an hour minimum wage would benefit at least 30 million Americans. Uh, now, this comes from a Congressional Budget Office analysis that was published on Monday. Uh, now, the data from that analysis shows that raising the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour living wage by 2025 would significantly increase pay for over 27 million workers and lift about 1.3 million people, including hundreds of thousands of children, out of poverty. Now, the reason they commissioned this study, of course, is that uh, right now there's a lot of push in the House to pass a $15 minimum wage that will be indexed to inflation. So now the CBO also found that doubling, uh, more than doubling the federal minimum wage, currently at $7.25 an hour, uh, would boost the income of families earning less than three times the poverty rate by nearly $22 billion. Hey man, who would have known that raising wages would lead to people making more money? I know, right? Wow. No, the real question here is always about what impacts this will have on the overall economy, including jobs, right? Uh, now, of course, the right wing loves to say that if we raise wages for workers, well, then they're going to lose jobs. All the jobs will be murdered. They will be taken out back and they will be old yellered. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to go old yeller themselves, uh, these, you know, these companies, and then nobody's going to have any jobs. And then cue Venezuela eating rats. So, of course, that's ridiculous, right? Uh, now, the CBO did estimate uh, that a $15 minimum wage could lead the loss to the loss of over a million jobs. Oh, my God. A million jobs? No, but wait a minute. Okay, so let's look at the numbers. 30 million people get a raise. 1.3 get lifted out of poverty. 27 million end up getting a gigantic boost. That is the worst case scenario. And it's, of course, at a cost of 1 million jobs. Now, to be fair, I don't know if it takes into effect the fact that people will be able to buy more, which actually does create more economic activity. Even so, helping 30 million at a cost of 1 million, well, there's this thing called math, right? 30 million greater than 1 million. If you're helping 30 million people at the cost of 1 million people, then those are good numbers. And it, it appears that the benefit would outweigh uh, the costs. Now, of course, unless you're part of that 1 million, that would then have to try and find another job. Even so, right? Um, there is an argument now that, that those numbers, that the 1 million job loss numbers is way too pessimistic. Uh, in fact, Heidi Scherholz, Senior Economist and Director of the Policy at the Economic Policy Institute, it's a uh, progressive think tank, uh, says the CBO substantially overstates the costs. Okay, uh, now let's get into her reasoning, right? Now she says that CBO finds a policy that would lead to a decline in employment of 1.3 million, though in choosing the parameters that resulted in that conclusion, it failed to appropriately weight the highest quality studies in the vast ac academic literature on this issue. So they didn't write the study. Uh, what they did is that they took an analysis of all the different studies on what would happen theoretically if we were to raise the minimum wage uh, to $15 an hour. And of course, it looked at historical context, what happened in previous uh, uh, you know, uh, areas that, that have seen their uh, wages rise. Uh, and so they went through and apparently they gave disproportionate weight to the studies that concluded that there would be significant job loss. And apparently, that, uh, those studies are outweighed by studies that say that there was uh, actually a, a very small to non-existent amount of job loss. Now, Shareholt says, as a result, policymakers must be skeptical of their assessment of the employment impact, given that other careful reviews of the minimum wage literature have shown that the average study find small to no employment effects of minimum wage increases. Now, that's neither good nor ill. More jobs, no more jobs. Um, and so it relatively just stays the same. Now, they, uh, one study was performed by economists at the University of California, Berkeley. Uh, now, they found that raising the federal minimum wage to 15 an hour by 2024 would result in substantial declines in household and child poverty. 
without any negative impact on employment or hours worked, even in low-wage states. So now there is a big body of evidence saying that, hey, your worst-case scenario CBO, which, again, isn't, isn't really all that bad, unless you're a member of that one million who could, who could lose their jobs theoretically uh, and have to find another job, hey, well, at least they'd have one at $15 an hour uh, and, and might not even happen. And yet 30 million still get a huge wage bump and all the economic benefits that come with it. To me, that is a bit of a no-brainer when you look at the numbers. Now, Shareholds goes on to slam Congress for their inaction when it comes to the minimum wage. She said, it has been more than 10 years since Congress raised the minimum wage. The longest stretch in history. And a lot of that was, by the way, under a Democratic president. Now, to be fair, there was a ton of obstruction from the uh, Republican-controlled Senate under Mitch McConnell. So let's be fair about that. Uh, and, I mean, after all, Mitch McConnell calls himself the Grim Reaper. I mean, I don't really think I need to explain all that. Um, but she continues. She says, this is a shameful benchmark. Reducing the living standards of working families in this country and exacerbating poverty and inequality. Congress should immediately pass the Raise the Wage Act and give this country's lowest wage workers a, rage, uh, a raise. Now, here's the thing. I, I wish they would, but I don't think that will happen. Not, not under the Republican Congress uh, and not with the corporate Democrats. I mean, look, corporate Democrats and Republicans, they exist to serve the donors, to serve these giant corporations. And look, a lot of the moderate so-called Democrats have attempted to derail this, wi uh, this bill by pushing for something called a regional wage. Uh, now, what that would do, uh, it was a, it, it's basically it would adjust a wage to a local living cost. Now, they argue that $15 an hour would lead to job losses in low-wage states. Now, you saw the Berkeley study that I just referenced, and it said no job losses or little to no job losses, even in low-wage states. So now let me give you an interesting example here. Let's look at West Virginia, right? Now, West Virginia, in West Virginia, the main industry there that pays anything is coal. Do you know how much the average, uh, the average coal, man, uh, coal miner actually makes? $23 an hour. Now, that is a decent wage, especially when you think of West Virginia, you think of Poor people, right? Poor white people in Appalachia. I mean, look, most of, the, uh, most of the jobs there, at least most of the competing jobs, do not pay $23 an hour. So it is mostly only coal. Now, the problem with that is that, again, coal is dying. And no matter how much Donald Trump will try to prop it up, it is not going to survive much longer, especially now. Right now, solar power employs more people than the entire coal industry. It is a dying industry. It's not going to last. And so what happens when coal is no longer, and, and again, right now it's, it is no longer profitable. What happens when they shut down on the coal mines? Well, now, again, you go from $23 an hour to whatever else that they pay in, 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 in West Virginia, which I assume is not very much. What happens to those workers? They end up getting jobs at nine, eight, nine bucks an hour. 10 to $12 if they're lucky. Right now, 725 is the federal minimum wage. And uh, basically they're saying, if, that's, if we could pay you less, we would. That's what that minimum wage actually means. Now, if you raise it to $15 an hour, which, by the way, it's not a coal miner wage. It's, 20, you know, it's not $23 an hour. $15 an hour is basically the minimum to survive. That is $30,000 a year. That is not that much. But it could be the difference in these low-wage states between survival and not survival. So that's really important. You have to look at the context here. Imagine all the people in West Virginia that would be boosted by a living wage, by $15 an hour, or all around the country in low-wage states. Now, look, 
California needs to have a much higher minimum wage because of the standard of living is, is, is much higher. Um, but again, $15 should at least be the floor. And when it comes to California, since they need a higher wage, they should be up to $30 an hour. But in places like Appalachia, like I said before, or places like uh, you know Michigan, uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio, they could deal. They could definitely deal with a fifteen dollars minimum wage, and that, of course, would raise up millions and millions of people. They would be positively impacted by this. So, now, here's the thing: we know why Republicans don't like this, right? They hate this idea. Why? It's because they want corporations to exploit your labor for very, very cheap. Now, less for you means more for them. It's a direct correlation here. So now I have a couple of quotes here. Uh, first is for, uh, from Senator Bernie Sanders. He's running for the Democratic nomination. Uh, he's also the lead sponsor of the Raise a Wage Act in the Senate. He said this, quote, Every time a minimum wage increase has been proposed, the extreme right wing and their billionaire campaign contributors claim that jobs will be destroyed. They have been proven dead wrong. It is time to raise the minimum wage to at least $15 an hour. So, um, again, that is um, Bernie Sanders basically saying, hey, look at the studies. The studies show that Republicans are once again lying to you about the impacts of uh, what would happen if we raised the minimum wage. Now, that uh, wa Raise the Wage Act, by the way, that has over 200 Democratic sponsors in the House and is backed by nearly 75% of Democratic voters. Why has it not been voted on? Oh, right, Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi has refused to bring that to the House. Now, when she was running for speakership, she said, first hundred days i'm gonna bring that to the floor and we are gonna have a vote on to raise your wages what happened what happened to that vote oh we didn't have it and instead nancy pelosi has, instead of being the resistance she has been the assistance to donald trump we need new leadership in the house uh but anyway moving on here uh to uh quote here from new york magazine's eric levitz now, he argued that the CBO analysis leaves congressional Democrats with no good reason to stop short of a federal $15 minimum wage. He said, quote, Given the scale of CBO's projected benefits and the uncertainty of its findings and a wage hike's potential drawbacks, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's caucus has no substantive excuse for failing to pass the Raise the Wage, uh, raise the wage Act. And given the states uh, of polling on the $15 minimum wage, Democrats don't have any political excuse either, which is correct. They do not have a political excuse, but they have another one, and that's actually going to be a much bigger obstacle, and that is the donors. That is why we need to elect uncorrupted Democrats who do not take corporate money. It is the only way we are ever Ever going to get real change hey guys hopefully you enjoyed that free video now I'm gonna have to ask you a favor between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts etc we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality which is where you guys come in see we have a patreon patreon.com slash tyt nation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.